Hey everybody, Dr. Rick coming at you from the H uh, with another Melanated Manly Mandates. This is Monday's Melanated Manly Mandates. This is a series that we started uh, some weeks back where we are, number one, defending black masculinity, defending it against attacks and assaults, but also setting the standards and the boundaries of manhood, giving a universal representation and definition to what true black manhood looks like and acknowledging black men and giving spaces to black men uh, to uh, voice uh, their concerns, voice their uh, state of being, be able, and uh, I'm excited about that with Brothers Unfiltered every third Thursday, thanks to uh, collaboration with the awesome people at the Sunrise Project, which is an own podcast uh, where I have for the last four plus years been a resident expert, but um, they heard they responded to the need for a space for black men. So what we do is we, on the third Thursday of every month, we sit up and we come together in a space. There are no women. Uh, it's not being recorded. It's not for a playback and examination. This is where we literally come and have an authentic conversation uh, with one another and talk about the things that trouble us, talk about the challenges we face, talk about all these things. Uh, and I'm excited about that and we got to continue to push that. So for the people who say that I'm always caping for uh, the black woman, you got to understand I've been fighting for black men from day one. But I also understand is that if we have women who are not being handled correctly, women who are not being protected adequately, women who are left to fend for themselves in whatever way you want to. And there are things that come out of that that make them hard to deal with that we have to be aware and acknowledge the fact that when we abdicate a position, when we abdicate uh, a, a, a role, then it leaves a void. It doesn't just continue to move the way we want it to without us having an investment and a staple and a position in it. And so I'm going to keep pushing that. I'm going to keep demanding that. I'm going to keep demanding it of myself. I'm going to keep demanding it of the people that I spend time with. Uh, that I consider to be friends, that I consider to be colleagues, that I consider to be associates, I'm going to hold that flag up that we have to be the pr protectors and the defenders of our women. And that responsibility of being a protector and a defender of our women isn't contingent upon them behaving the way we want them to. Our responsibility is to set the environment and see how they respond to an environment that's conducive for them to behave. Or, and I hate the word behave because it makes them seem like they're subjective to us and the actual truth is they're subjected to their role in this whole thing just as we are we have a higher calling and a higher responsibility and a higher accountability beyond ourselves and so do they and so it if when we set the right environment let me put it this when we set the right environment they're able to execute who they are instinctively divinely naturally and you see it in the beauty of their response. You see it in the softness of their presentation. But when you sit up and you leave them to fend for themselves, when you leave them out there, and then they determine within their experiences that one of the things that they have to defend themselves from more than anything else is the very ones that should be protecting them, you're going to get a certain thing. And if we don't address that, and independently and exclusively of any exogenous idea or notion or behavior or whatever, one thing, that, and I, I say this often, um, one thing my great-grandfather, to me, who was the epitome of manhood, uh, was academically academically an uneducated man, had a second-rate education, but when it comes to wisdom, forethought, the ability to solve issues, the ability to get the most out of life, uh, he is that dude. And one of the things that I could not do with my grandfather is when I had done something that I should not have done, tell him that I did it because somebody else did something. The only thing that I could come to him and say is if another boy had put his hands on me or attempted to put his hands on me, that I handled my business. But as far as anything else, including hitting on and mishandling females, 
then I was going to have to answer to him. It was that simple. It wasn't any excuse. I couldn't say, well, she did this and she said this. Then, you know, do you, and what he taught me was, in not the same language, but in the same principle, stop matching the energy of the woman around you or you're going to always be at the mercy of the woman around you because she's operating in her energy when she gets emotional. She's operating in her energy when she gets frustrated and she tells you you're not doing what you're supposed to do. She's operating in her energy when she flees from what she feels is harmful. Your responsibility is to create a space through an energy that you should be emitting when you are confident in who you are, when you know you're meeting the demands of your responsibility, when you know that you're standing up and being everything that you're supposed to be. And I don't mean perfectly. I'm not perfect. I haven't been a perfect husband when I was a husband in the past. I haven't been a perfect father. What I can tell you is I'm a good man and I've, I've been great at doing it, but not perfect that there are some things that I wish I could do better, especially when it comes to my kids. But even in situations in the past, you know, I'm not, you know, the cheating type, but you know, maybe I need to be a little bit more willing to do some things that I not, don't necessarily want to do as far as what traveling or whatever. And, and when you travel as much as I've traveled, it's easy to sit up and say, man, I ain't got to do it. I ain't doing it, but it's more than you. And those are small things. What I'm talking about, man, I'm never out with any intent. I'm not going to be intentionally harming anybody I care about. I'm not like, hey, man, I'm finna go creep. No, I'm finna do this. I'm finna do it. No, my thing is going to be me being in my space so much that I have to remind myself that it's not just my space. And that is something that I've got to, you know, be aware of, you know, moving forward in the future. But it's a bunch of different things but the thing is you're not going to be perfect but you got to have an idea and an intent to sit up and say this is how i'm going to move this is what i'm going to do this is how i plan on operating in my life as a man but we have to have a universal standard and what we cannot do is what i see and that's the idea that we don't have to protect women because they're not behaving the way or acting the way or doing what we think they ought to be doing that's not how it works if you want to be called a leader if you want to be called the head if you want to be referred to as a king then it, the, the, the buck stops with you you got to set the environment you got to be a leader leaders don't force people to follow them leaders create an environment and a vision and in, 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 a, in a clarity of how they're moving and operating and they develop a trust between the people that they are working and covering that those people want to follow. Anytime you got leadership that's forcefully pushing their agenda, that's a dictatorship. That's not relationship, that's a dictatorship. Leadership is saying, I'm showing you something and you trust me at a level that you're coming along with me to get it accomplished. And that takes the person that's at the helm to be willing to say it stops with me. If something's not right, I'll figure it out. I'll work it out. And I'm telling you, it's not easy because you're dealing with other people. You're dealing with people that may not be on the same page, people that have um, different expectations and a bunch of other things, but it's our responsibility to figure it out. On that note, look, uh, I am leaving you with a challenge. Stand up and be aware. Connect with someone who will hold you accountable to a higher standard of manhood. If you don't know, reach out to the Black Voice. Reach out to the Odyssey Project. Connect with us through the Sunrise Project so that we can connect because we're building something here. We're fighting for something here. We will only go as far as we're able to physically lead our people. We will only elevate as high as our women can spiritually elevate us. We need one another and we have to stop acting like we're enemies. Um, that is what I'm going to leave you with today. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day, and we'll connect soon. I'm out.